Hi folks, welcome to this lesson on using the substitution technique to find definite integrals. The big change here is that we're going to change our boundaries when we move to u or when we express in terms of u. And because of that, we won't have to sub back. And I think it'll probably take uh, an example to show how that all works. So let's work that through on this one over here. Hopefully we're getting the hang of this and we're saying there's an x squared minus one expression and there's an x. I think the parent expression is that x squared minus one because its derivative is two x, which is similar to x. Then you'd say, oh, I don't have two x. I wish I did. I've only got one x, so I've got one half. We have one half of du by dx. And you can rearrange this as slickly as you want, um, but I'm just going to make those substitutions pretty straightforwardly. I'm not going to try and do any fancy business. Where I saw x squared minus 1, I wrote u. Where I say x, I wrote half du by dx. And we have a dx out here. Probably some simplification to happen. The problem is that if I write this, now it looks like those are u values, and they're not. 2 and 4 are x values. u is this new variable that I just made up so that I'd be able to integrate maybe a little bit easier. So one way that we can deal with this, or the way that we should deal with it, is to figure out what's equivalent here. When x is 4, what is the corresponding u value? And when x is 2, what's the corresponding u value? That sounds very abstract, but it, it's actually pretty straightforward. When x is 4, how do we find u? Well, we just sub it into this expression here that says u equals. So u would be 4 squared minus 1, or 15. That topmost boundary is u equals 15, okay? because that corresponds to x being 4. That bottom boundary, the x equals 2, well, let me put in 2 into this u equals. It's 2 squared minus 1. Huh, there we go. It's 3. And I'm going to take the time to write u equals for each of them so that I'm very clear to myself about what kind of values we're talking about. If you wanted to, you could even write that these are x values. Okay, of course, it's implied by the variable you're working in. But the instant you start working in multiple variables or making a substitution, things might get a little bit dicey. Okay, here's everything written out uh, a little more plainly or a little more spread out. And so I'm going to keep going here. u equals 3 to u equals 15 of 1 half, 1 half times 1 over u times du. So I changed the boundaries, and I rewrote in terms of u. At this point, the actual integration should be very easy. One half stays, and this is ln absolute value of u. And we've got that from u equals 3 to u equals 15. You can just sub back in here. Okay? And I'll show you how to do it if you don't want to sub in, um, if you want to go back to x. But here we can just sub in those u values. It'll be a half ln 15 minus a half ln 3. That's the correct answer right here. We could find it as a decimal approximation, though honestly, if we had our GDC, you'd just type in the original question. If I want to make it even prettier, we can do some log stuff. So that's 1 half ln 15 minus ln 3, or 1 half ln, let's see, 15 over 3 from log laws or 1 half ln 5, or ln 5 to the half, or probably in its prettiest form, ln of the square root of 5. Okay. Those are all equivalent. The last few things we're doing are just writing them in progressively fancier ways. But what we did here is we changed our boundaries, and we didn't sub back and get x. Now, if you really wanted to sub back and put it back in x, back in x, 
if you wanted to take it from this step and say, no, 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 I'm going back. So I'm going to have ln of the absolute value of x squared minus 1. And I'm going back to my x values from 2 to 4. What will you get? You'll get a half ln of 4 squared minus 1 minus a half ln of 2 squared minus 1. Okay, and wait for it. What does that give us? That gives us a half ln 15 minus a half ln 3. And you can see that that's exactly what we got right here, okay, which was a correct answer. Uh, but we got it less painfully by doing what we had in blue. So on a definite integral, there's no need to sub back. On an indefinite integral, where the answer is a function, yes, you should sub back and get it in terms of x. So at this point, I'd encourage you to just pause the video and see if you can identify what u is here, what du by dx is, how much du by dx we have, or what multiple of it we have, and to change the boundaries. And we're back. So I'm thinking here, u is this kind of term, x squared plus 3x du by dx is going to be 2x plus 3. We do not have that. We have, we have negative that, or negative 1 times that. So we have negative du by dx. Well, that's all right. We'll just sub negative du by dx uh, wherever this comes in. The other thing we need to change is the boundary. So we've got boundaries of x equals 1 and x equals 0. And I tend to just write them from top to bottom there. Um, so when x is 1, u is going to be 1 squared plus 3 times 1, because u is x squared plus 3x. So u will be 4. When x is 0, u will be 0 squared plus 3 times 0, where it will still be 0. So it's possible they'll be the same. It's just not a guarantee. Okay, let's work on writing this out. So that's the integral from u equals 0 to u equals 4 of the square root of u times negative du by dx by dx. Now we'll just clean it up a little bit. u equals 0 to u equals 4 of negative u to the 1 half du. Okay, I like to put my coefficient uh, of negative 1 out front. Makes sense. And now I'm ready to integrate. So the power goes up by 1. Flip of the new power comes in front. We already had that negative. It stays. That's from u equals 0 to u equals 4. From here, we'll just sub in negative 2 thirds, 4 to the 3 over 2, minus, careful here, negative 2 thirds, 0 to the 3 over 2. I guess you don't have to be that careful because it's going to be minus 0. So that's a negative 2 thirds, 4 to the 3 over 2. That means that you're going to square root it, gives you 2, and cube it gives you 8. This will be 0, so we'll get negative 16 thirds. Okay, so there was no point to sub back into x in this definite integral. We can double check this on a GDC. And on the GDC, I'm just going to put it in as the original question was. So it was uh, 0 to 1 on the square root of x squared plus 3x. And that was multiplied by negative 3 minus 2x. Okay, And I've got a bunch of brackets that close them off. Negative 5.333, that's negative 16 thirds. Perfect. We can double check that if we're not sure. Negative 16 thirds. Bam. Let's do one last one uh, that'll illustrate kind of a neat case. So again, you can pause, you can try this out, look for u, du by dx. u should probably be a fairly simple expression. And here we go. Let u equal x minus x squared 
du by dx is 1 minus 2x. Oh my gosh, finally, we have exactly one of those. We have 1 du by dx. Yay! I also need to change the boundaries. So x is 1 and x is 0. When x is 1, u is going to be 1 minus 1 squared, or 0. When x is 0, u is going to be 0 minus 0 squared, or 0. All right, let's make the substitution. So the bottom is u equals 0. The top boundary, or the upper boundary, is u equals 0. 1 minus 2x, that's like the derivative of the sort of parent part. So we have du by dx times e to the u dx, or this, e to the u du. Now some of you, even at that first step, are saying, hold on, I know the answer here. Let's work it out algebraically. e to the u is pretty much the easiest integral to find. Okay, the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x, so here we go. And we'll just sub in. We'll have e to the 0 minus e to the 0, or 1 minus 1, or 0 in the end. All right, how did we know it was going to work out to be 0 before? We knew it right at this stage. If the boundaries are the same, then there's no width, so there can be no area or net area. So knowing that u equals 0 is the both the lower and the upper boundary guarantees us that we're going to have an integral of 0. Let's quickly look at the graph. Here I've got it written in. I'll graph it. Maybe I'll try and zoom in. If I asked it to find that integral, so second, calc, press 7 for integral, from 0 to 1, You can see that that area has an equal amount above and below the x-axis. That's why the net area, or the integral, is 0. Algebraically, we can see it because it just worked out to be 0, or because we had no width. There's some practice on page 566, numbers 1 to 8. There's also some extra stuff over here. And remember that the IB does allow you to use substitution or inspection as a technique. So if you're doing these definite ones by inspection, just happening to know what the integral is, then you probably have to actually work in x. If you make a substitution to u, well, then you continue working in u for a definite integral. They're unlikely to make you substitute if you can figure out the antiderivative just by looking at it. Good luck with the material, folks. I hope this has been helpful, and take care.